This is the first percutaneous transcarotid transcatheter aortic valve and valve implantation performed emergently with percutaneous axillary ECMO and transeptal integrate aortic crossing. The patient is a 65-year-old lady who had a surgical aortic valve replacement with a 21 millimeter trisecta valve and a cabbage and multiple other comorbidities. She initially presented with an end STEMI and was found to have an atretic lima graft to the LAD and a high-grade stenosis of the SVG to the RCA. She underwent successful percutaneous revascularization of the LAD and the SVG. Unfortunately, her clinical condition progressively decompensated and she developed cardiogenic shock and respiratory failure. She required endotracheal intubation and multiple pressors. CEE showed a very calcified bioprosthetic valve with significant evidence of aortic insufficiency as well as mitral regurgitation and Doppler data consistent with severe aortic insufficiency as well as severe aortic stenosis. She was taken to the cardiac hybrid room where peripheral angiography showed severe peripheral vascular disease with a patent right subclavian artery. The left subclavian artery was also patent, however, it had significant angulation. And at this point, the decision was made to insert percutaneously an arterial ECMO cannula via the right subclavian artery and to use the right femoral vein for the venous ECMO cannula. Left carotid angiography showed a widely patent large vessel with an anatomical course that was amenable for TAVR. The left carotid artery was considered to be the preferred access for TAVR. However, the patient was already loaded with dicarylor, aspirin, and fully anticoagulated with intravenous heparin. A multidisciplinary team, including two cardiothoracic surgeons, debated about the safety of a cutdown and recommended a percutaneous approach. Ultrasound guided access to the left carotid artery was obtained using a micropuncture technique, and the site was preclosed using a standard double perclose technique, followed by insertion of a 14 French sheet. Multiple attempts were made to cross the bioprosthetic valve using multiple wires and multiple catheters. However, this was unsuccessful. At this point, a transeptal puncture was performed and integrate crossing of the aortic prosthetic valve was performed. The wire was then snared and externalized via the carotid artery. A rail was achieved. A pigtail catheter was then secured in the left ventricular cavity, followed by a precurved wire, which was used as a rail for TAVR. A 23 metronic evolute valve was then deployed in a standard fashion. And once a acceptable position was achieved, the valve was completely deployed. Echocardiographic data showed acceptable gradients, a decrease in the mitral regurgitation, and a significant improvement in the aortic insufficiency. Hemostasis of the axis side was achieved with the deployment of the perclose switchers plus manual pressure. Postoperative echocardiographic data showed state radiance and an improvement in the left ventricular function. There were no evidence of neurological deficits. Ultrasound of the left carotid axis size showed less than 50% stenosis, 
The patient was eventually discharged on post-operative day 11 and was seen in clinic for a 30-day visit and she was doing very well. 